All right, so last week I wrote up a little blog post on my website about principles that I try to live by. And I actually had a few people message me saying they really found it kind of useful and a little bit helpful. So I thought, why not go into a little bit more detail about all of the 30 points that I kind of listed there and kind of why I try to live by them. I by no means like know how everything works. This is just some stuff that's helped me personally feel more confident, want to make more videos, want to create more. This is just some things I try to live by and it's only helped me um, just do more stuff that I've like always wanted to do. So, all right, first point is use what you have. Something I struggled with when I was younger was thinking I had to have the best camera gear, had to have a certain type of camera to like start filming and making videos. And that's something that really held me back quite a lot, thinking I had to have the best camera when in reality you can use your phone or anything to make videos and kind of start making stuff. Even like if you want to design stuff, you can draw stuff on a piece of paper and send it to manufacturers um, at a library. Like you really don't need much equipment to start making stuff. And it kind of applies to anything. Say you want to start running, you don't need the best running shoes to start running. You don't need a fitness tracking watch. You don't need all that stuff, right? Use the shoes you have. Just use what you have. That's kind of something that I've tried to apply in my life and it's helped me quite a bit. Especially like, I feel like when you, a lot of people can get stuck. I've been there myself. Like when you buy all the gear to try, give you the motivation to go do something. Like you buy all the camera equipment and then you don't make any videos, right? Or you buy the running shoes, you don't go for a run. Goes on, right? You get, get my point, use what you have. What's the next on the list? Point two, never hold in a compliment. Um, this is something I heard someone say, I don't know who said it to me or I heard it online, but I think it's just something so good. Say you saw someone on the street, you like their shoes, just say it to them, right? And it's gonna make their day. And one thing that happened to me when I was in New York on the subway once, or even just like when I was walking around New York um, in general, I just got so many compliments on like my style, what I was wearing, my shoes. I was like, damn, I've never like walked around and just got so many compliments in a day. And I feel like over in America, people are way more open to just being like, yo, nice shoes, man. Or like, you know, just, and then just walking away and like not even expecting anything from it. So like there's something that I try to do is just try, give out as many compliments as you can. If it's genuine and if you actually think it's true, just try give it out, don't hold it in, you know? It's only gonna help make someone else's day a little bit better. Third point, stay curious. Something I've tried to do is always be curious, always be trying to learn new things and, oh look, there's an old Teji stick here. Sorry, this is like one of my old favorite places I used to go to, look at that. You see it up there? That's like a vintage Teji sticker. It's like one of the first ever ones. Anyway, back to what I was saying, stay curious. So one thing I've always tried to do is always be trying to learn new technologies, new skills, Anything like that, because I feel like if you don't keep trying to learn, you just kind of start stagnating, right? And you just don't prog progress, right? That's why I'm always trying to learn new softwares, new technologies, trying to teach myself how to code, how to make music, how to do all these different things. That's just something that I want to apply to my life because I feel like it makes me more well-rounded and all those things, right? So just stay curious. Next point, point four, challenge yourself. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Do hard things every now and again. Makes it easy to do them once you do it another time, right? Go for a run, run a little bit further than you normally do. Next time you try to go that far, it's gonna feel way easier. Simple point, that one. Next one, point five. Listen more than you talk. This is something that's really helped me with communicating with strangers and in, in conversation and just really just becoming a better communicator um, in general. And it's pretty simple, like literally, whenever you're in a conversation with someone, most people can't wait to say what they have on their mind next. Um, but if you actually take a step back and just genuinely listen to what they're saying and just ask more questions, a lot of people will just go on and on and you can really like get to know people just by simply just shutting up and just listening a little bit more. And it's something that's really helped me interact with strangers all around the world. Just ask more questions and just listen, all right? Pretty simple. Next point, embrace the unknown. So it's kind of scary. This world's a pretty big place. I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. I don't know if, if any of the things I'm working on is gonna pay off. I don't know. I don't know anything, right? And I just think accepting that fact that like there's a huge unknown out there, it's kind of scary. And just accept, learning to accept that 
and accept the risks that you take with everything you do. It helps you kind of deal with the how scary it is, the unknown, because it is a pretty scary thing, to be honest. I'm not knowing what's going to happen, but it's kind of, in my opinion, I feel like that's, it's kind of cool that you don't know what, how, what, how things are going to pan out because a lot of the times when you have like a set idea of how things should turn out, it's not as exciting, right? But if you get, if you get surprised, it feels way more, I don't know, way more rewarding when you don't know how things are going to pan out. It turns out even better than you could ever imagine. Or sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to. And that's something you have to learn to deal with too. And that's something that I've been trying to deal with. Next, next point, think for yourself. Online nowadays, something I've been trying to get better at. You hear someone say a point on TikTok, YouTube, and you just take it in. Take it word for word, and then you just live by that, right? And same with this video. Like, don't take everything I'm saying as gospel. Take it with a grain of salt. Use some critical thinking and say, think to yourself, okay, I might apply that in my life, I might not. That's kind of useful. It kind of shut the fuck up, you know? Um, so yeah, thinking for yourself is a huge skill in today's world, and I feel like a lot of people myself included sometimes don't do that a lot of times it's easy to go with the consensus and just kind of go with what's popular or what everyone else believes in but sometimes it's, it's good to think a little bit for yourself next point don't be afraid to ask for help you've probably heard it before but it really isn't that scary asking for help like a lot of people will want to help you whether that's with a project or whether it's with something you're dealing with struggling with a lot of people would be open helping you out if you just kind of ask and it's, it's a lot easier to say that than like tell someone just to like ask for help because especially if it's something to do with like mental health anything like that it can be like very scary but i feel like the sooner you do it the better things will probably turn out for you um and also like don't be afraid to do things with other people. Like, I feel like you don't always have to struggle by yourself. That's why I've really tried to build communities um, around the things I love, especially when it comes to design, filmmaking, uh, creativity, tech. And that's why I've got communities on Twitter, on Instagram, and with friends in both in real life and online. And we kind of just share ideas with each other and go at this thing together, right? Because it's kind of scary idea. Like I said before, you don't know what the unknown holds. So it's kind of nice being in it with some other people, you know? So you don't feel as alone. And it's, it's more rewarding when you're doing it with other people. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Next point, progress over perfection. Basically, this is a huge one that I try to live by. It's why I've been able to put out so much stuff. And sometimes it might be a negative too, because I value progression over perfection like so much. Basically, I really believe in just getting it done, putting it out and moving on to the next thing. A lot of people, I've been there myself, want things to be perfect and it's good to aim for perfection, but sometimes it can come to a point where it just holds you back completely from like producing anything. That's something I should probably work on myself is just wanting to perfect things a little bit more before I put it out, right? But I really do think just small iterations over a long enough time period, you'll really see the difference. And the only way you're gonna see that difference 10 years, 20 years from now is if you just take that first step in uploading the first video, making, designing your first t-shirt or doing whatever. You can't get to this crazy end goal unless you take the baby steps moving forward. And that's kind of what I've learned that things take time. Things really do take time. And you and overnight, you're not going to become this crazy, super fit, super talented designer, filmmaker. These all things just apply to myself. And I've just kind of realized that. But yeah, that's, that's that point. I don't know what number we're on, but let's go to the next point. Good habits are contagious. So this one, I think, is super useful, especially if you want to kind of have an impact on the community around you and immediate people who you find yourself around. If you take, for example, if you're getting up early in the morning, going and training, going and exercising, or say, for example, you're going and you're shooting YouTube videos every week or doing this, that, it could be anything. I'm just using points that apply to me, right? If you're doing that, it rubs off on the people around you. People see what you're doing and think, oh, cool. You know what I mean? It's contagious. People see that and they think, oh, I can do that now. So that's kind of why I try to like make as much as possible I'm trying to get back into my fitness grind and kind of figure that out. I've slacked off with that, but it's just progression, right? And that's what I've kind of learned, especially when you're around other people doing stuff, it makes you way more motivated to do stuff. And it's why I've wanted to form this little collective I've created in Sydney, which is just designers, YouTubers, videographers, photographers, all of us, right? And we come together, we show each other each other's work, we go through, critique each other, and then we just keep each other accountable. And being in these environments where you have people around you, 
Um, it just really motivates you seeing that your friend is building that. My friend's making a music album, then he's doing this. It's like, damn, I want to do that, you know? So huge, huge shout out to my friend, Alex. He's over in um, the States. I think he's back in Miami right now. But I see him making music, making art, doing all these things. And I'm like, I want to, I want to do that, right? So it just, you know, and it's just this, you know, contagious effect. Someone sees you, they start doing it. Someone sees them, they start doing it. And people start living like a little bit better. Um, so that's, that's another point there. What have we got next? Learn to let go of things. This one's huge. A lot of the times we hold on to things. And I think I've wrote a blog post about this before and it's about letting go and how often when you let go of things, it's, it seems to come right back to you. When you try to hold on to things, it's this kind of needy feeling. Um, it applies to relationships, finances, or anything else in your life, I feel like it can apply to. It just, when you have that neediness and you need it to happen, need it to happen, you're holding on to this one outcome, you don't want to let go of anything, it's hard to kind of move and grow and accept and allow the unknown to come in and bring in this like sort of magic. So letting go is a huge one. And just being able to stay uh, agile, right? If, if you're always just stuck in this mode of holding on, holding on, you're not open to the endless possibilities out there. Next point, don't forget to play. This is a huge one. Lately, I've been getting like Lego, getting like random games, toys, and it's like actually just playing, like having fun, doing random shit. I feel like as you get older, you stop playing and you lose that sense of wonder, curiosity. I think it's good to try and keep that. That's why I even see a lot of people nowadays on TikTok buying Lego sets, building them, and it, it's fun. Just do random stuff, have fun, and just learn to play again. Like, go just chuck some rocks. I don't know, just like find some fun in that. But yeah, just learn to play. That's something that I've tried to bring back into my life is that sense of just play, right? Even when it comes to creating art or making music, I feel like if you're playing, like say I'm just playing around in the software, like I have no intention of how it's going to turn out. I often make something way better than if I go into something planning to make it, right? Because when you plan to make something, oftentimes it doesn't go the way you're expecting it. And then it just, you're like, oh, why is it not sounding how I wanted it to sound? Whereas if you're wanting to play, I feel like you just get complete unexpectedness and you don't know how things are going to turn out. They could be trash or it could be amazing. And I feel like just learning to play, whether it's painting, drawing, making music on your computer or whatever it may be, I feel like learning to play is, is awesome. And I feel like it's something that I've really tried to implement back into my life. Next thing, what have we got on here? Stand up for yourself. This is one thing my mom has always taught me. Her mom taught her. One thing I've always got taught is just don't take shit from anyone. If anyone tries to say some shit to you, um, either ignore it, don't feed into it, but also don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and you know say something back if it's in real life. Don't cop shit from anyone and you know just stand up for yourself and like look after the people around you. Next point, tell the truth. I don't know, I feel like it's a pretty simple one. Tell the truth, especially to your friends and be honest with people. Honesty is huge. If you don't like something, say it. It helps the person know you don't like it. There are situations where you can hold your tongue, you know, if you don't want to kind of cause unnecessarily conflict, but there is times when it's needed too. So just don't be afraid to speak up and just kind of be honest with people around you, your friends, your family. That's something that I've tried to do. It is scary when you have to tell the truth and be honest with someone that you don't like what they're doing or something else is going on. But it's one of the best things I've found that I've been able to try to learn to do a little bit better. Next point, what have we got? What have we got? Talk to strangers. Talking to strangers has cha changed my life completely. I probably talk to strangers a lot and I'm comfortable doing so because I saw my mom always talking to strangers. She would never think she's better than anyone. You know, she would always go talk to the homeless person on the street, give them the time of day, you know, or speak to anyone, right? Anyone who needs help, you should always offer it. And I feel like I picked up that trait and it's really helped me to open up so many possibilities in my life. And just having the confidence to talk to anyone in the world really opens up a lot of doors, especially if you're on the street, if you're in a new country, if you're in a hostel dorm, you know, it's easy to kind of shut off from the world and just uh, be in your own little bubble. But it's really, really beneficial, I've found, to just talk to strangers and see where they're from, see what they're about, listen to them, ask questions and actually like learn about them. I've done so many things just because I spoke to strangers, right? And I can't even go in a de detail right now because it's literally half my youtube channel is just me talking to strangers and the experiences that that's taken me right that's a huge one i think talking to strangers and having the confidence to do so will cha change your life it, it definitely changed mine all right next point how you react is everything so the only thing you do have in your control is how you react to the situations you, you find yourself in and basically it's pretty self-explanatory but it takes a lot of work i've found like especially if something happens that's unfavorable to you it really takes a lot of patience 
with yourself to build the ability just to not really let things get to you when that when it happens right and basically if something bad happens in your life you can either take it in one or two ways you can let it get to you and let it destroy you bring you down and get you in this negative cycle of thinking or you can look at it like okay this is a lesson that i've been put into and there's so much opportunity for growth here because it's like your muscles when you go to the gym if you want to get stronger if you want to get fitter you have to break down your muscles it's pretty obvious you probably already know that and the same goes with life basically you need these hard situations to go through to make you stronger to and to deal with other harder things because life's only going to get harder as you get older all right so the next point is pretty simple it's pretty much accept your emotions it's a lot harder to do than just to say it it is hard sometimes if you're frustrated you're angry to just accept that but basically i feel like you shouldn't oppress your emotions because it's only going to pop up in other ways down the line learn to listen to yourself a little bit um that's something that i've tried to do and i do that a lot of the time by just talking to my phone i'll put on a voice recorder and i'll tell the phone exactly how i'm feeling i won't deny it i won't try to explain myself i'll just literally tell my phone in my voice recorder exactly how i'm feeling tell it exactly how i'm feeling and i just know no one's going to hear this it's just me talking to myself and it's a really good way to just kind of accept those emotions that's one little thing i found to help me a lot next point know when to roll up your sleeves it's a pretty obvious one there's times in your life when you're going to chill times in your life when you're going to be busy and finding oh, and knowing when you got to put in the work is a skill in itself because there's times when yeah things might be a little bit cruisy but also also times when you should probably get to work you know and start grinding it out a little bit so yeah that's a pretty simple point on to the next one true change never happens overnight i kind of touched on this a little bit in another point but i think this is is true we know it know it's true and it's everyone would love to hear the quick fix to solve this problem solve that problem quick fix to make money quick fix to get in shape and the hard thing to hear is that quick fixes don't exist and if they do they don't last very long so if you really want change in your life it's just going to take a lot of time it's taken me a long time just to like be more comfortable with myself to become more confident on camera in public filming but like it just takes a long time and i feel like it's just compound interest on improving right and if you don't start today you're not going to get that extra bit of interest on your um, effort you put in every, each and every day so that's why i really value progress over perfection because as soon as you start as soon you can start getting that compound interest on everything you're putting in regardless of if your videos suck the first 1000 videos you make doesn't matter because those videos are going to compound and compound and compound until eventually you have something huge there so yeah next point i'm gonna lay down for a second i'm getting tired from walking around <laughs> okay next point what am i saying here no winter rest that's kind of that's kind of ironic that i just laid down just then <laughs> but basically knowing when to knowing when to rest is huge it's easy to like get into that mindset of you have to work every day 24 7 if you want to make it especially on social media these days they really perpetuate the need to grind 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 but i've found personally knowing when to rest and actually chill play a game spend some time with your friend your girlfriend or whatever it really helps with becoming more productive when you get back into that mode of wanting to make stuff is someone behind me sorry i'm just getting self-conscious and that's what happens when you film sometimes but it's okay basically i've found when i can take time out to actually rest watch a show or do whatever I start getting itchy to want to like work more, make more videos, design some new clothes or, or whatever. So that's something that is really, it's a really important skill that I've had to learn because I feel like previously I was a really bad overworker and I would just be working, 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 but I'd be working at 50%, 60%, right? Because I'd be half there, kind of tired. Whereas if you rest and you genuinely rest, say you take time to actually take time to yourself, enjoy yourself. Like I said, watch a movie, go to the movies and just have some downtime right if you can do that you can go back to the studio back to the camera back to whatever with 100 percent of your attention that's something that i've really had to learn but it's really helped boost my productivity ironically um by resting more it's made me work more i guess um next point always be creating it's a huge one for me that i try to live by always be trying to make stuff doesn't have to be literally making things like you don't have to literally be making a teapot making a painting making that you can make relationships you can make friends with people you can make make whatever you want right you can make a, a lego make some dinner make that make this 
But the thing is, I really try to do in my life is I try to create just as much as I consume because it's easy to become just a consumer who just watches, 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 consumes, 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 and never really creates and puts anything out into the world. It's really easy to do that. And you don't have to do it by making, like I said, making videos or doing kind of what I'm doing. Everyone's different. Everyone has their thing they like doing, but you can make things in your community that could benefit other people. You can make things online. I can't really give you examples. I don't know who you are exactly, but there's always things you could be doing to create things in your life. Just try to create just as much as you consume, or even a little bit less, it's okay. What's next? Always be learning. This point is kind of similar to stay curious, but to always be learning is a huge thing in my life. I feel like in school, it kind of made it not as interesting to learn about topics, but now I'm reading like history books, economics books, reading books about, you know, blockchain and cybersecurity and all these things. And I, this is something I never would have wanted to do in school. School makes things so boring, but when you're like self-directed and you're trying to teach yourself these things, it's fun to learn, to learn these new concepts and ideas. And that's something that I really value in my life is just the idea of just being a lifelong learner. And that's something that I think is just, I want to, I want to do till the day I die. So I just want to always be learning, when I'm 80 years old, I want to still be learning about the latest technology or learning about what's going on in the world and just always staying curious and always keeping my brain kind of at the forefront of what's going on. Next thing, pessimism is a virus. Basically, it's easy to be pessimistic in this world. It's easy to look at what's on the news, what's going on and, and kind of look down on it, talk shit, you know, and have that negative attitude to a lot of things in life. And it's super easy for that pessimism to spread. And if you're around people who are negative, People who are always talking shit about other people behind their back, you know, kind of looking down on people for trying to do stuff. That's only going to make you think that's okay to kind of do that. And it's just, like I said, it's a virus. It really infects people and, and people, I've been there, you know, when I was younger, you know, I would talk, talk shit about people who I was actually jealous of because they were doing things that I wish I could have done, right? I wish I could have had the balls to do those things and I would talk shit about them. Um, but I've learned to kind of like, and I think it's just, way more beneficial in the long run um, especially if you want to achieve anything because if you're in a room full of people who are pessimistic about everything not much is going to get done that's why i personally have tried to surround myself with people who are optimistic about the world people who want to make stuff create they don't judge each other you know they support each other they have an idea oh cool how can we maybe make that better you know and it's just i've found that to really be a huge part of my life next point keep your word this is very similar now I think about it as tell the truth, but I'm gonna keep it in here. Keeping your word is huge. If you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you say you're gonna run that far, do it. If you don't, it's okay. It is okay, but try your best to keep your word with your friends, with your family. If you say you're gonna do something for someone, do it. Don't be that guy to say, say you're gonna do it and not kind of show up when, the, when you have to. I've been there before. I've been that guy where I've promised I was gonna do something and I just, I don't know what it was, I just didn't do it. And it's really not good. It doesn't help your name. It doesn't help your image. And people begin to like lose trust in you. And I feel like that's huge in today's society is building trust with the people around you. And the best way to do that is just by keeping your word. Next point, believe. This one is huge. If you don't think it can happen, it's not going to happen. So as simple as that, just learn to believe. Next point, loss and gain are the same. This point here I really like because anything you lose in life is a door that opens and anything you gain in life is also a door that shuts. I don't know if that um, explanation makes sense, but basically everything you lose is exactly what you gain. That's something I've learned. Each situation you find yourself in or each path you go down, I look at it like, uh, say you lost all these friends in your life. Think about the amount of space that's opened up to bring in new friends, right? Think about it like that. Something that I've tried to kind of bring into my life, especially when it comes to the way I react to situations I find myself in. If I can position the way I perceive situations into a positive light, it helps me to deal with almost any situation I find myself in. And it could help you too, maybe. <laughs> okay, next point, life is in the gray. This one's huge. This was a huge unlock for me, understanding this. Nothing in life is black and white. You might think it is, but it really isn't. And even, it's kind of it's kind of a mind fuck, but even that term in itself is true and false at the same time. So it's like this paradox in life that <laughs> things are true, but things are also false. So any advice someone gives you, like myself making this video, there's truths in this and there's 
half truths in this. Learning to understand that things aren't as black and white as they seem, right? It's a really hard one to get your head around. I still struggle with it sometimes. Learning that life, like I said, is in the gray, but I might talk on this a little bit later. Don't know what else to say on it right now, but on to the next point. Avoid gossip. This one is huge, kind of goes back to what I was saying before about not talking behind other people's back. Don't gossip about other people. Yeah, you can have little gossips and joke around. I'm not saying don't do that. As I said, that's, that's actually a clear way to explain the last point is when I say don't do something, it doesn't mean every time you don't do it. That's what I mean by life's in the gray. Yeah, sometimes it's okay to gossip or like joke around, you know, about your mate. You know, you're allowed to do that, right? It's just this hard thing because a lot of the time people take advice or take things online completely as is. They don't think about it and apply it in their own life in like a critical way. And that's something that goes back to think for yourself. Another point in this video somewhere. But I think it's just best to try and avoid gossip. Like I said, it's probably not going to happen. Probably going to find yourself joking around with your mate, talking about someone. Like that's, you're allowed to do that. But I'm just saying to avoid gossip um, as much as possible and try not to like talk shit about people. I think that's a huge one. But yeah, trying to avoid gossip as much as possible is something that I really try to implement in my life. And don't think I'm not perfect. And that goes back to like the whole life is in the gray, not it's not black and white thing, you know? Um, you don't, you're not expected to be perfect. You don't have to live by these like perfectionist fucking things that can fuck you up. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a swim, but let's uh, go on to the last point, I think. Last point I got in here is know when to break the rules, right? It goes back to what I was saying about life being in the gray, not everything being necessarily completely true possibly half true and what i mean by that is there like is rules that like society expects you to follow or your friends or your family and yeah this might be helpful to a certain extent but there's also times when you should just say fuck it and like know when to break some rules even all these rules in here there's times when you should break each and every one of these rules i've just said so like it's this hard thing of like developing this thing of like learning how to think for yourself and i'm still trying to do that it's really hard but it is really easy to take things as is and just apply that and think you're doing it in the right way but like i said it's a long journey of trying to you know make those small little incremental gains each and every day or year not everything you hear online is true you don't have to follow everything that people tell you to do or your friends tell you to do or your mom and dad tell you to do you know there's times when you should listen to people around you there's times when you should also say you know what fuck it i'm gonna trust myself i'm gonna trust my gut and i'm gonna go with this right so it's just it's hard because they're like <laughs> Anything of advice or anything like that, it's just so hard to just directly apply to someone's life because you need to think about it yourself and really, really think about it yourself. Not, I don't know what I'm saying. I've been walking around for 43 minutes now from the car out here, but this water's looking amazing. I think I'm gonna jump in the water here. Hopefully you found some kind of insight or value in that little video. It's a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I needed some more time to expand on some of the ideas I spoke about in that blog post on my website. If you want to go to my website as well, I'll put it up here, teji.io. It's like my personal site. I have my store, which is tejitopia.com, but teji.io is just where I post like whatever I want, right? But I think right now it might be time for me to go for a little swim and end the video. So, all right, I'm about to go for a swim, but I just thought of one last bonus tip. All right. I don't, know, dude, I don't get my mic wet, but bonus tip, learn to enjoy the journey. Learn to enjoy the struggle. This is the funny shit you'll look back on when you're older. Um, this is something that I've just kind of learned to just try to implement a little bit. Is my mic getting wet? I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is like the time you're probably in right now. You're probably young like me, probably trying to do stuff. You probably have all these ideas. And I feel like just learning to enjoy the failures, the things that work, the things that don't work, and just learning to just roll with it, you know? Like I said, if it happened overnight, what's the fun in that? If it, everything worked out straight away, where does the fun come from like that? Where is, does the fun come from? If everything you wish wished happened, happened, where's the fun in that? There's no unexpectedness. There's no things that can surprise you. All I'm trying to get at is that like, if you got everything you asked for, everything would become meaningless. And I feel like it's, ah, it's kind of corny. Everyone kind of says it, but it's a struggle that gives things meaning, you know, it's, it's the grind, it's all that. And that sh it should be fun. I feel like life should be fun. <laughs>